name is Brunal and I am from SSA Technologies. SSA Technologies is a leading consulting organization based in Mumbai and we consult primarily on improving the designer's productivity and bringing out excellence in design. Now today I am going to talk about DFMA that is design for manufacture and assembly. Before we have a look at DFMA, let us have a look at how the traditional design approach behaves in the design industry. Now let us take a look at the weakness in traditional design process. Also termed as the product out approach. The traditional design approach behaves in this fashion. No customer need identification is done. The design is made and manufactured, tossed out outside for the sales and marketing guys who push out the product to the customers and they are unsatisfied because the latent and obvious needs of the customer were not identified. Now let us see how design dictates cost. Around 5% of the product cost is gone into the development of the product and 70% of the product cost is dictated by the designers who have committed the cost towards the product. Now having said about the product out approach and seeing those disadvantages, now let us take a look at the new product introduction process that takes up in the Indian design industry. It is also termed as marketing approach. How does this fashion behave? The latent needs of the customer are understood, the product is developed, pull is created by the market, wherein the product is received by the customers and he seems very satisfied because his latent needs and obvious needs are completely stated in the product. DFMA since it is carried out in the design stage of a new product design and development, this chart gives us the opportunity for change. Now let us take a look at this graph. X axis shows the time of the concept to the product development till it reaches the customer. And the y axis shows the opportunity for change from low to high. Now we can see clearly here at the concept stage the opportunity for change is very high and the opportunity for change is very low when it reaches to the customer. Quite obvious that maximum changes can be done at the concept design stage only. DFMA is basically designed for manufacture and assembly. The main purpose of DFMA is to reduce the number of parts in a product assembly, thereby reducing the cost of the product and assembly. DFMA identifies majorly assembly problems and the production problems occurred in the product design and throughout the development processes. The problems addressed by assembly problems are termed as DFA that is designed for assembly and the problems faced in the production are addressed as DFM that is designed for manufacturing together clubbed as DFMA that is designed for manufacturing and assembly. DFMA is applied in a structured approach. The first step is to carry out a functional analysis of the product. How to carry out a functional analysis? First classify them into primary or secondary component. Primary component A, secondary component B. B components are the one which can be eliminated or combined with its mating part and A components are the one which are primary needed for the uh, product assembly. Further we will drill down into the design efficiency which is nothing but A components divided by the number of parts into 100. Now how to do feeding analysis? Feeding analysis is nothing but the way or the easiness of a component design which is easy to feed through a conveyor or pass on from hand from the uh, point of manufacture till the point of assembly. After having the feeding analysis done, we arrive at a feeding ratio. After calculating the feeding ratio, an assembly sequence flow chart is developed. How is it developed? Many assembly sequences are taken into aspect like gripping, insertion, fixing. Some symbols are prefixed which are given to those assembly sequences and the assembly sequence flow chart is plotted. After having done the feeding analysis, we will take a look at how fitting analysis, the next obvious step is done. In fitting analysis, we have gripping analysis. Gripping analysis is nothing but the easiness of a component, how easy it is to grip a component. Then insertion analysis, how easy it is to insert a component in its mating part. And then the fixing analysis, how easy it is to fix a component in its mating part here. After having done all this analysis, we 
suggest improvement for the design efficiency and the feeding and the fitting ratios in the product or assembly. Now, coming to the most important part of DFMA, the benefits of DFMA. We have applied DFMA across many products in various industries. And our experience says that we have reduced around 20% of the number of parts in the product and around 30% savings in the cost of the product. DFMA encourages concurrent engineering. Concurrent engineering is nothing but a cross-functional team working together on a design product. DFMA also integrates the design and manufacture uh, part aspects of the product or assembly, thereby reducing the lead time in the new product introduction process and also eliminates the later processes involved which would have, which would have otherwise occurred. See this design. This is an automotive wheel which was designed traditionally by the designers and it has around 110 parts. Now when DFMA was applied on the same product, what was the result? Significantly came down to only one part. That's the power of DFMA. When you incorporate DFMA in a product design, the part reduction and the cost reduction is significantly improved. Well folks, this marks the end of our session on DFMA. I hope this was an insightful session on DFMA. If you want to know more about DFMA, do contact us or visit our website and our blog. Thank you.